Isaac Saracen is a skilled hacker, formerly employed by British Telecom Sprint. When his health failed, Isaac did the only thing he could think of. He ran. A burqa-wearing doctor known as Fatima took pity on Isaac and helped him make his way to the mysterious Star X line. At the end of all hope, they found the Star X line and the slim promise that the enigmatic beings behind the Star X could save Isaac from the implants which destroyed his life. What do you do when those who saved you have recorded everything you are? What do you do when your every action is tracked by the keylogger? ColbyJack.net is proud to present Firmware Keylogger, the third installment of Firmware by Colby Jack. Episode 62. Oh, but we do, Janan said with a smile. The command line on your unit is set to dump every command sent to it to a log file. It's a form of key logger for beings like you. I bet if you took a couple minutes, you too could find the log file. I'll be right back, I said as I turned my eyes inward to examine the equipment I was on. I'll be right here. Jeanne answered. I didn't respond to her. I was too focused on finding out the truth of the matter. Now that I knew I was using the command line for my access to the Apemapo's base systems, things appeared very different. It was like being blindfolded and someone made you eat something you'd been told was dry, moldy cake. It tasted horrible and nasty, and your stomach turned over fighting to keep the poison out. Then the blindfold was taken away and what you thought was dry, moldy cake turned out to be 15 joules per pound artisanal organic brie. The blinders were removed. Foul was now fair. That is what it was like to discover how I manipulated the Opemapo Null. Once I knew what I was doing, I then noticed the linkage from the command line to an ever-increasing file hidden in a bit of memory reserved for basic operating tasks. If I hadn't known I was being bugged, I don't think I ever would have found the keylogger. The keylogger was of classic design. Its base architecture was the same as it had been since the first hacker had attempted to record the keystrokes of the soon-to-be first keylogger victim. It was a compact piece of utilitarian code which had been pared down to the smallest sliver of operational code I thought it was possible to write. It was the closest a program got to being invisible. I opened a copy of the log file and realized its name, 4A696E616E2D746560D70. Translated to Jinan dash temp when converted to Igrish. She hadn't even tried to hide it. All I had to do was to actually pay attention and be just a little paranoid. The text within was in plain text, easy to read and comprehend, as long as one understood what percent tar cz seven nine six f seven six six one two d seven three six one six d six nine six c dot arx open ssl enc dash aes dash two zero four eight dash cbc dash e kaku nenrayu saikuru Greater than seven nine six F seven four six one two D seven three six one six D six nine six C dot ARX meant. I did, and that was all that mattered. I found variations of the same line three more times, each one with more bizarre phrases for the passkey. The first had been Kaku Nenrio Saikuru. The second had been George Smiley. The third had been Frankie. Of the three, the most baffling was Kaku Nenrayu Saikuru. Shinan, I started my question, do you know what Kaku Nenrayu Saikuru means? Shinan turned back toward where my avatar was projected against the wall and said the most illogical thing I had ever heard. It means nuclear fuel cycle in Nipponese. 
You speak Nipponese? I asked. Heavens, no, she laughed. I can barely handle translating my own books from Egrish to English. And those are related tongues. Then how do you know what it means? I asked. It's from Kaneda Adelstein's Ran. It's from when the fool accuses her master, some crazy old royal woman, of planning and not following through. Janan answered. The only reason it stuck with me was the double translation of the line on the version I had. The dub had her saying, Always planning, but never following through. While the subtitle said, Nuclear Fuel Cycle. As if those three words were all there was to be said on the subject ever. Jeanette laughed. That's when I first realized language was a society's collective memory. Something horrible had happened in upon a long time ago, and its memory was carried into the future in the form of a phrase no one remembers the origin of. Why did I choose that? How did I even know of it? I asked. There was no way for me to know without waking the sleeping giant, which was why Sam. I can't answer that. I thought you said you'd remember it, as the information was written across your memories. Janan asked. Maybe I deleted one too many pointers. Maybe the mapping wasn't as robust as I thought it would be. I rolled my pursed lips back and forth across my clenched teeth. It's like, it's like I can remember that I saw movies. I remember the names. I remember the actors and the plot and the awards and effects, and it all feels like I'm reading a synopsis off of one of those movie sites. It dawned on me. I couldn't remember the names of any of the sites I knew which compiled the data of the modern entertainment experience. I laughed at the irony. This is so incredibly frustrating. I can remember that the memories of the movies I saw as Isaac are as empty of meaning as those synopsis pages on those infernal media websites. I was getting frustrated. I wanted to strike out at something. I wanted to punch a wall or a cabinet or any other bit of the world I couldn't interact with. Name one of the sites so I know you know what I'm talking about. Jeanne had stepped back as if she were afraid I would strike out at her. Your face looked like Nona's face did when Leo threatened her in a different lifetime on the streets of Little Russia. I didn't know what to say. She just said, Fulkmini. Fulkmini is one of the movie data sites, in a tone which said she was scared of me. I remember that one, I said, and the saying of those words relaxed me, pulled me back into a world of memories and connections. I remember wasting a lot of time on that site. Doesn't it have a recommendation engine? Janan noted my change in posture and relaxed. They all do. But they are the one which provides a prior art recommendation. They are best for finding the first example of the latest films, I finished. Weren't they the ones who revealed that Containment Inc. was a scene-by-scene -scene ripoff of Reitman's 1984 classic Ghostbusters? Jeanne's face became filled with interest. Not the interest I had felt before. Not the sexual kind. No, no. What your face showed was that of an intellectual at the height of your powers confronted with an example of something she had thought was theoretically possible, but had never believed she would see it for yourself. It was, she answered. You can remember trivia about a sight after simply hearing the name, while you are still drawing a blank over a memory which surely stuck with you stronger and longer. You have no knowledge about something you believed was unforgettable. This makes no sense. She rubbed her temples and walked in tight circles, doing that thinking dance I remember doing myself back before the world became insane. Tell me, what do you remember about George Smiley? Was he a co-worker? Love interest? I cocked my head at your last question. I don't remember being into dudes, I said without thinking. Janan let a frown appear on your lips for a second before morphing into a mischievous smile. Tried and didn't like, or never tried? I ignored the non sequitur. I know I never worked with a George Smiley. What I remember about him makes me feel like I'm remembering a number of conflicting sources. I think it might be from a series of movies, or maybe the same film made over and over again, and something deeper. 
something which reminds me of sheets and shining words in the dark and everything being big. Could it be a character in an old movie which you first encountered in a book as a kid? Jeanette asked. No clue, I answered, though I know the name impacted me somehow. I just don't know why he was important. Then what about the last pass key? Does anything about it ring any bells? Jeanette asked. Let me see. Frankie. No last name. Not getting anything, I said, almost as soon as the name rolled over my tongue. You sure? Jeanette asked. You're pretty tense now. And it's not the physically violent tense from earlier. This is something else. Tense? I snapped without thinking. Why wouldn't I be tense? Me, not an earlier version of me, but the me who rides on your hip. That me encodes a file that took up most of a half Yoda byte storage unit and deletes the pass keys, and I have no idea why the words were chosen. Wouldn't that make you tense? Actually, now that I think about it, how did I encrypt a file which was too large to allow two copies to exist? Have you thought about that? How'd that work? Jeanne lowered your hands, your body language radiating a feeling of acceptance, warmth, and home. It's not important. But it is, I cried. How did it work? Jeanne's voice became soft and accepting. You could have created a virtual network and system memory, and then streamed the file through the buffer, applying the encoding as it exited the virtual network space. You probably sent it one packet at a time, verifying the validity of the download before deleting the original packet from the original archive. But the log file doesn't show that! I cried. Why was I crying over something so pointless? Was I losing my mind? Had I broke myself? Do you know how you do all the stuff you do? Jeanne asked in a calm voice. No, I answered. Then don't worry about it. It's not important. Someday, if you want, we'll try to figure out how you do what you do. But that's not important now, Jeanne said in soft tones. Now, can you remember working, playing, or living with anyone named Frankie? I shook my head. I didn't know a Frankie. I didn't know a Frankie. I didn't know a Frankie. I didn't know. My voice repeated endlessly. I was like a machine stuck on infinite repeat or someone trying to convince himself a lie is true. A cooing sound, a motherly sound, a sound of comfort and acceptance cut through my endless repeat of my mantra of, I didn't know a Frankie. It was Jeanne. She was huddled up as close to my fetal curved image on the floor as she could without breaking the illusion. I wish I could hold you, I whimpered. You can hold me if you want, she then whispered into my ear. All you have to do is ask. Would you hold me? I asked like a child who had just discovered the world was scarier than he had ever dreamed it was. Of course, of course. Shadan said as she stood up and turned on a flashlight. The CMA can finish this on its own. Where are you going? I asked for my ball on the floor. You aren't leaving me, are you? I must have sounded pitiful, for Shadan stopped her preparations for departure and turned to where I lay upon the floor. I'm not leaving you, she said softly as she patted the Opemapo no on your hip. I'm taking you home so I can hug you. Really? I asked as I stood up and extended a hand to Jeanne. Really? She extended your hand toward mine. We overlapped in the space before us, and neither of us minded. You should be honored, Jeanne teased. How's that? I asked as I sniffed back my simulated body's response to a hard bout of crying. You're the first boy I've ever brought home, she answered, with a smile I had to sense through her eyes' reactions as we had passed out of the Urzat server room and into the darkness beyond. I projected myself into the corner of your personal infoscope and gave Jur a knowing smile. Jeanne, you forgot your hammer. It's not forgetting when you leave it behind. Jeanne answered, I don't think we'll need it again.
I was going to say something about villains in the dark and the dangers of moving through the darkness between the brightness of the neighborhoods when I realized what she was saying. It was then that I knew for sure Janan was no Janet. Firmware Keylogger begins where Firmware Proxy ends, which in turn followed on the heels of Firmware Hijacked. Firmware Hijacked, Proxy, and Keylogger are all available in ebook versions from our store at shop.colbyjack.net, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Smashwords.com. Just search for Colby Tracks. That's C O L B Y T R A X. I'm the only one. A complete audiobook version of both firmware, hijacked, proxy, and soon keylogger is available for download through our shop as well. If you don't need any stuff, but would like to support our work, drop on by colbyjack.net and hit the pretty little donate button conveniently located on the right-hand side of the blog roll. Firmware Keylogger is released under a Creative Commons, non-commercial, attribution, share-alike license. Do what you want with it. Just don't sell it and always tell people where it came from. If you received this from a friend and want more information about ColbyJack.net and our split personality website, just drop on over to ColbyJack.net and select either the audio or visual side. The audio side carries our podcast while the visual side carries our writings. Whichever side catches your fancy is fine with us. We're of two minds about the whole thing anyway. I do mostly Twitter, so if you do the tweets and want to follow me, I'm Colby Tracks. That's C O L B Y T R A X. Thank you once again. Remember to be fabulous and have a wonderful week. <laughs>